everybody. My name is Hannah Sullivan. I am the co-founder of Pogo Insurance with my wife, Jade Sullivan. Jade used to be a freelance video editor and I used to be a freelance designer. A bunch of our friends freelance and are self-employed. And so we created a business insurance platform for freelancers to help them succeed. And in order to succeed, you need to stay in business. So that's where insurance comes in. So what is insurance anyway? Insurance at its core provides protection against possible events, outcomes, or losses. Commercial insurance protects your freelancing business in the event of an accident, professional error, or an unhappy client. If you're wondering how business insurance works, it's actually pretty simple. Your freelancing business pays an insurance company a small amount each year for an insurance policy. In return, the insurance company promises to pick up the bill if something bad happens. It's important to note, paying small controlled payments is much better than footing the entire bill if something bad happens. In fact, that's what puts so many small businesses out of business. It's because they can't pay for their claims out of pocket. If you're wondering what type of insurance you need and why you need it, listen up. So if you're self-employed, you have a lot of responsibilities and there are many things that you need to juggle. And at some point, something is going to go wrong. There will be a mistake or an accident will happen or something random will happen that isn't even really your fault, but you could still be blamed. So it's not really an if when you're talking about if you need insurance, it's more of a when. As much as I wish it wasn't true, no one is invincible, not even super cool, creative, organized, awesome freelancers like yourselves. So what impacts a freelancer's insurance needs? First, your profession. Different industries face different risks. For example, a freelance photographer has a lot of equipment to deal with. So commercial property would be more impactful for someone with a lot of work gear compared to someone who has far less equipment, like a virtual assistant. A photographer, uh, uh, excuse me, a photographer's job is more physical than a virtual assistant's. So coverages like general liability and workers' compensation insurance may be more critical for the photographer. Another element that impacts your insurance needs are location and interaction with the public. If you're a freelancer, you can work wherever you want. Coffee shops, co-working spaces, or even from an Airbnb in Thailand. Most freelancers don't own or rent a specific business location, so you wouldn't really need to worry about ensuring the location where you do business. But if you're meeting with clients in person, you definitely want to have general liability. More on that in a few. Okay, so now it's time for our commercial insurance overview. First up, general liability. General liability is a general coverage for many of the things that can go wrong when you're a freelancer. First, it covers third-party bodily injury. Let's say you're meeting a client at a coffee shop. They trip over your power cord and fracture their wrist. Technically, you can be held liable. If you're found responsible, your general liability policy will pay for the medical bills. Second, it covers third-party property damage. For example, you're meeting a client at their office to go over some design work. You spill your coffee on one of their devices, causing damage. General liability will cover the loss. Finally, general liability covers personal and advertising injury. This refers to non-physical damages, like copyright infringement, slander, and libel. If someone files a lawsuit against you for any of these claims, your policy will pay for the damages. So the more you interact with clients in person, the more valuable this policy will be. If you represent clients or brands, this policy can be especially important. Next up, we have commercial property insurance. This policy is super important because you rely on your devices to keep your freelance business running. And the fact of the matter is, most small businesses can't afford to replace damaged equipment at the drop of a hat if something happens. Also known as business property insurance, this policy protects your business property from losses such as fire, theft, vandalism, and natural disasters while you are on your business premises. If you work from home, your home is considered your business premises. If you have important equipment, supplies, or inventory, this policy can be critical because in the event of a loss, the policy will pay for the cost necessary to replace or repair the item. 
Let's say you're a developer and your computer is damaged, resulting in your inability to complete your work. This policy will cover loss of income if you are unable to work at full capacity. If you typically work outside of your business premises, look into an inland marine policy. It covers your business property on the go. Next, we have a business owner's policy. Also known as a BOP, this policy packages general liability and business property insurance into one bundled deal. It's a great way to save money because the price of a BOP is typically less than the cost of each coverage separately. It's great for freelancers who are considered to be low risk, like copywriters and video editors. This is also a great option for home-based freelancers. 48% of home-based freelancers rely on their homeowners or renters insurance to protect their work gear. However, these policies typically only cover up to $500 in business property damage. Lastly, we have workers' compensation. This policy protects you and your employees in the event of a work-related injury. Freelancers don't typically have employees, but this is a great option to cover yourself in case you get hurt on the job. If you are required to have your own workers' comp policy to get hired, but are looking to save some money, a ghost policy is the best way to save. Ghost policies are very inexpensive because they exclude you from coverage, but still offer you your certificate of insurance. Our ghost policy is awesome because we've packaged it with a bonus accident policy, which gives you 24-hour accident coverage on or off the job. We will dive into this in a little bit. Here are a few examples of claims workers' compensation insurance would cover. Carpal tunnel, a back injury from lifting heavy equipment, or a trip and fall accident at a job location. So, next we will talk about the difference between health insurance, workers' compensation insurance, and accident insurance. Let's start with health insurance. Health insurance covers medical expenses for personal illnesses, injuries, and conditions. Medical costs associated with accidents outside of work are covered by health insurance. The premium is the amount you pay your health insurance company to keep your policy active, and the deductible is the amount you have to pay towards your medical bill before your insurance company will start paying. This number varies by plan. If you experience a job-related injury, it is likely that your health insurance will not cover the medical costs. If an accident happens at work, you would need workers' compensation insurance to get benefits. Many employees can get health insurance through their employer. As a self-employed freelancer, it's up to you to find your own coverage. Next, we've got workers' compensation insurance. This form of insurance covers work-related illnesses and injuries. If you get hurt on the job, workers' comp will cover the costs associated with the accident. If you slip on an ice patch outside of your apartment and fracture your tailbone, workers' comp coverage would not pay for the damages. Because this is an injury that happened outside of work, you would need a personal health insurance plan to be protected. Depending on your industry, many hiring parties will require that you have your own workers' comp policy before you begin working. Finally, let's talk about accident insurance. Accident insurance provides you 24-7 protection on or off the job. Regardless of whether or not you have health insurance, this policy helps pay medical and non-medical expenses that result from an accident. Accident insurance stays with you, so even if you change jobs, your policy will remain the same. While this policy does cover medical expenses, it is not a substitute for health insurance, but it is a very good option if you're looking for some coverage rather than none. Unlike health insurance, your benefits are paid directly to you instead of your health provider. That way, you can allot the funds in the best way you see fit. Benefits include out-of-pocket medical costs, deductibles and co-payments on your medical insurance, monthly expenses like mortgage or rent, car payments, utility bills, and more, and basic needs like childcare, transportation, groceries, and home maintenance. So, are you wondering if an insurance broker would be beneficial? I will give you the quick answer, that is a yes. In order to get insurance, you have to fill out a quote form. If you go straight to an insurance carrier, you will have to fill out a quote on their site. But if you want to compare coverages and costs, you will have to fill out similar forms on dozens of sites. If you work with a broker, you simply fill out one form and your insurance expert will shop the quote for you. 
If you're looking to save time and money, working with a broker is the way to go. Our company, Pogo Insurance, compares rates from over 30 insurance carriers. With us, you get the best coverage at the right price. I can't speak for all brokerages, but our services are completely free. We get a commission from the insurance companies that we work with at no extra cost to you. Lastly, let's talk about what else freelancers need to know about insurance. First, we'll go over insurance requirements. Depending on what you do, your hiring party may require you to have business insurance. If your work is physical, you might be required to have your own workers' compensation insurance. If you interact with clients in person or the public in general, you may be required to have a general liability policy. If you're leasing a building, your landlord may require you to have business property coverage. If you're a consultant or provide any professional services, you may be required to have professional liability insurance. Insurance requirements vary, but even if you're not technically required to have an insurance policy, a little extra coverage never hurts. How much does business insurance cost? The cost of insurance depends on what you do. The more risk you face, or the more you want to cover, the greater your premium will be. Because different policies cover different things, the prices vary. The best bang for the freelancer's buck is purchasing a bot. You can snag this package for as little as $250 a year. Wondering if it's worth it to invest in business insurance? Let's take a look at the cost of a policy versus the cost of a claim. So you're a consultant. You rely on your laptop to perform your day-to-day -day work and your laptop gets damaged to the point of no return. Now there are two scenarios. One, you can pay the $2,400 to replace the MacBook Pro. Or number two, you can pay a mere $250 per year to make sure your work gear has the proper protection, including replacement and repair costs. Claims like these are exactly what puts freelancers out of business. Something breaks and they're unable to replace the item. Or they can replace the item, but the dent in their wallet puts their freelancing operation at risk. And on top of that, while their gear is getting repaired or replaced, they're unable to work, meaning they're missing out on the income they depend on to survive. So in summary, I would say I 10 out of 10 recommend business insurance to all freelancers. Investing a little bit upfront is a great way to save your business in the long run. Thanks guys so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions about business insurance for freelancers, I'm happy to help. Thanks.